many of my student cracked interviews and got offer letters and i believe you can also achieve the same hello friends as per my own research dotnet is the backend technology where the average salary is highest than any other backend technology so if you want to improve on your salary then dotnet is a good choice now to get the dotnet jobs and for cracking the interviews today i am going to cover the top 10 dotnet interview questions for candidates having one to two years of experience in dotnet you can also treat this video as a mock interview for your practice just listen to the question pause the video think about your own answer and then listen to my answer that's how okay hey my name is happy and i help candidates in cracking dotnet interviews by posting dotnet career related job related and interview guidance videos if you don't want to miss those latest videos on dotnet then hit the like and subscribe button now let's start with the first question does c sharp support multiple inheritance how can you implement multiple inheritance in c sharp we have already seen this question but just because this is a very important question i i, I know you already know the answer the answer is simple it's no c sharp does not support multiple inheritance but yes there is an alternative way that is c sharp support inheritance by using multiple interfaces so when i say c sharp does not have multiple inheritance because normally multiple inheritance means uh, multiple classes okay but there is an alternative way and that is by using multiple in interfaces we can achieve uh, inheritance okay what is abstraction how to implement abstraction in real applications let's start with the definition this time abstractions means showing only required things and hiding the background details now what does it mean for example suppose you have a web application now the end user can use that application right he knows how to use the application 100 percent but do he know how this application code is working internally no right that is abstraction user can use the application without even knowing the code a driver can drive the car without knowing the engine engine internal working similarly in coding also we can create application in such a way so that one developer can use one function but internally he might not be aware how the function is working let me show you the code example here you can see we are using substring method of a string class right now do you know how this substring method is working internally this method is somewhere inside the base class of dotnet framework and without knowing the background details you are using this method that is also a kind of abstraction remember abstraction is a concept and you can implement it by different ways one way to implement it is by using the abstract class and interfaces for example here is a base abstract class employee salary class and inside this you have calculate salary method now this class and method can be used by derived classes like this now when you create the object of this employee class and use this calculate salary method then even if you don't know how this method internal logic is working what is the internal logic even you can use this calculate salary method in the proper way and you will get the proper output so abstraction is a concept of hiding the background details right and the benefit of abstraction is it will make your program more secure and more structured we can implement abstraction in our code by many ways but mostly we use abstract classes and interfaces for implementing abstraction i hope now you get it all right friends before we hit the next question if you have not yet accepted my never give up challenge then accept it make a promise and commitment to yourself no matter how tough it gets no matter how many rejections you will face 
बट यू विल नेवर गिव अप अंटिल यू क्रैक द इंटरव्यू दैट इज़ ऑल्सो माई ओन स्ट्रगल स्टोरी विद इंटरव्यूज एक्सेप्ट दिस चैलेंज बाय राइटिंग नेवर गिव अप इन द कमेंट सेक्शन राइट नाउ ट्रस्ट मी द मोमेंट यू राइट इट यू विल फील एन इंस्टेंट बूस्ट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस एंड मोटिवेशन टूवर्ड्स योर गोल वट इज पॉलीमोरफिजम एंड वट आर इट्स टाइप्स वेन टू यूज पॉलीमोरफिजम इन रियल एप्लीकेशन दिस इज अगेन एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ओप्स लेट सी द डेफिनेशन फर्स्ट पॉलीमोरफिजम इज द एबिलिटी ऑफ ए वेरिएबल ऑब्जेक्ट और फंक्शन टू टेक मल्टीपल फॉर्म्स नाउ वट इज मल्टीपल फॉर्म्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन इंग्लिश रनिंग वर्ड कैन बी यूज फॉर रनिंग ए रेस एंड रनिंग ए बिजनेस इन बोथ केसेस द मीनिंग इज डिफरेंट बट द नेम रनिंग रनिंग इज सेम राइट दिस इज मल्टीपल फॉर्म्स वेयर सेम नेम थिंग कैन बी यूज फॉर डिफरेंट पर्पजेस Multiple forms can be achieved in C sharp via polymorphism. Now let's see the code. Here you can see two functions with same name add but having multiple forms. Meaning both functions with same name are doing different things. One is adding to integers and another one is adding to strings, right? Here is the client code. I variable will receive an integer value and str variable will receive a string value. This is one type of polymorphism and the name of this type is called method overloading. Now there are two types of polymorphism compile time and run time. Overloading is a type of compile time polymorphism and overriding is a type of run time polymorphism. Compile time means when you build your project then dot net framework will convert your C# sharp code into machine language and create a DLL for that right? this duration of this conversion is compile time so if there is any error you will get during this conversion uh, like you will get the compile time error uh, uh, you will get that error in the build errors okay now when the build is complete and your browser will open to show the output that duration is called run time and if you get any error during this it is called run time error so overloading is a compile time because when building the project dot net framework compiler know that these two methods have same name but they are different and overriding is runtime because dot net framework at compile time not able to identify whether methods of sa this same name are different or same we will discuss overriding in upcoming videos also what is boxing and unboxing here is the code here we have an integer num now integer is a value type then we are assigning this integer num to an object obj and object is a reference type right so we are converting value to reference type this is boxing so boxing is the process of converting from value type to reference type in c sharp integer bool char decimal byte are value types and string array class object are reference type now what is unboxing then again look at the same code here we are converting back the object obj back into integer for that we create one integer variable and while assigning the object we are explicitly writing int type here so that is unboxing which is just opposite of boxing where to use boxing and unboxing in real applications in real projects here is the code we are creating one array list and then adding the integer i into it now the array list do not store integers it stores objects only so internally this integer i variable will be con first converted to object and then it it will be added in the array list although we ha have done this but many times like we have done this many times but we might not not know that we are doing boxing here then when we are extracting the items from the array list then again we have to do unboxing to extract the object from array list and convert that into integer the same thing i have written here i hope now you understand the use of boxing and unboxing in your applications and projects hi friends just a small notification this video is part of my full course top 500.net interview questions including topics like .NET Core, Web API, SQL, Solid Principle, etc. 
all questions pdf book link is also present below in the description so like these candidates who cracked the interviews and got offers via this course and if you don't want to miss anything for your interviews then you can try this course otherwise no problem let's continue when to use interface and when abstract classes in real applications real projects first let's check when to use interface suppose in your project you have two classes permanent employee and contractual employee now you know both these kinds of employee will have some email id and some manager right so you will create one interface i employee and just declare methods assign email and assign manager here later you will inherit this i employee interface in both these permanent employee and contractual employee classes now why interfaces are the right choice here because every employee must have some email id or manager so the declaration in employee interface is mandatory but the implementation is not clear right now right the manager can be different the email can be different so an interface is a good choice when you know a method has to be there in the class but it can be implemented differently by independent derived classes that's when we use interfaces it acts like a contract next we will see when to use abstract classes when to use abstract classes and not interfaces for example with classes permanent employee and contractual employee here we have an abstract cla base class employee dress where dress code is an abstract method because that implementation we don't know right now because it depends dress code is depends whether employee is a male or female implementation will differ right but this employee dress color method value will always always be blue in any case whether male or female therefore we know the implementation and that's why we defined the method body here so when to use abstract class abstract class is a good choice when you are sure some methods are concrete or defined and must be implemented in the same way in all the derived classes now one more thing here normally we prefer interfaces because they gives us the flexibility to modify the behavior of methods at later stage so that's why we prefer interfaces what is the difference between continue and break statement first continue keyword okay see when a loop will start from zero then it will start printing the values but but when the i variable will be equal to 3 then it will go inside this if condition it will see the continue keyword now the role of the continue keyword is to stop the execution here and transfer the execution to the start of the loop back again and see this will be the output the loop is printing 0 1 2 and then when it sees 3 it will goes inside it will back to the top and then it will skip the 3 and then it will print the 4 so the definition is continue statement and the loop iteration and transfer the control to the beginning of the loop now let me show you the break here is the code the same code but now it has been break instead of continue now when i is equal to 3 it will see break keyword and then it will not go to the top of the loop like continue but this break statement will end the loop iteration trans and transfer the control out of the loop or you can say it the break statement will exit from the loop and this will be the output see the loop stops after printing 2 because break keyword exit the loop and no further execution of the loop will happen so the definition is break statement and the loop iteration and exit the loop this is the difference what is the difference between finally and finalize this is a silly question their name is somewhat similar but they have no relation but as it is an important question so we will cover it finally is used for exception handling right finalize is a method which is automatically called by the garbage collector to dispose the no longer needed objects garbage collection i will explain in other videos but these are the differences between finally and finalize what is garbage collection 
This is a very important question like abstract class and interface differences. So let's see the definition first. The garbage collector manages the allocation and release of memory in .NET framework. If you remember CLR, then you remember it manages the execution of program, right? Operations like memory management, right? So garbage collection is one of the responsibilities of CLR, which is the part of the .NET framework work only. For example, suppose you create one project and write this code. When application will run, this employee object will be created and then it is used to call get salary method. But after that, what will happen to this employee project? This object is still there in the memory with no use, right? Now this is the responsibility of the garbage collector to dispose or release this employee object. So garbage collector will dispose this employee object automatically when it is no longer needed. Similarly, you can have many objects in your application like this. See how there are so many objects present in the memory and so less free memory space is there before garbage collector run, right? And after garbage collector will run, many unused object or resources are released or disposed. And then the free memory level has also increased, which is really good, right? So that is the job of the garbage collector and that is what is garbage collection. All right, congratulations for completing all the questions. If you have reached here, that means you have the courage and patience required for cracking the interviews. Just don't stop here and keep rolling until you get your goal. Okay, only one recommendation from my side. If you have not started yet, then start giving interviews. As I always said, interviews are the best form of learning. Interviews help you not just in learning, but if you are selected, the reward is very, very good. Okay. And if you are not selected, then remember, you will still lose nothing. Not giving interviews is even worse than facing rejections in interviews because not attend attending the exam means the opportunity is gone. Companies will hire someone else. They will not wait for you. Okay. But if you are rejected in interview, then at least you will learn new things. And next time you are more prepared. Right. So start giving interviews and do accept my never give up challenge until you crack the interview. Okay. Accept the challenge now by writing never give up in the comment section. Finally, all the best from my side and I will support you in your career journey by posting the interviews, careers and the job videos continuously. Join my interview cracking community by pressing the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much.